Critical media literacy is essential for being a thinking citizen who engages in the world. And by that, I mean every aspect of our life is shaped by media. We can't live outside of media. We are bombarded constantly by media messages. And so in order to be able to navigate our way in the world, we need to think critically about those messages. We need to be able to deconstruct who is creating them, why they're creating them, and how they're impacting us. And then also what we want to do in response to those messages, not just as individuals, but as a group of united citizens addressing structural issues that come into play. One of the things that I think is important about critical media is that it also is connected to critical pedagogy. And this theoretical tradition wants us to engage in the world as citizens. They want us to engage in making real change or media activism. And that's what separates media literacy from, from critical media literacy. Regular media literacy treats us as consumers and wants us to know what product to buy, what's, what's better um, for us, uh, or what is more truthful. And, and that's a, a fine starting point. But critical media literacy has us thinking about issues of power and then doesn't stop there. It has us go one step further to think about how we can address issues of inequality, not just for us as individuals, but for the entire society. Mm. Having critically media literate journalists is essential for our society because they are the ones that are shaping and investigating what is going on in the world. They are our gatekeepers into what we should be thinking about. And if they're not questioning people in power about their decision making, if they are not questioning major corporations that affect not just what we buy, but also how we live as these major corporations shape policy, we will never have an informed public. So we need those journalists who I understand in corporate media, there are fine journalists and they are working under these corporate constraints, these corporate deadlines that, that work against them doing their jobs. And so if we have independent journalists who are free from those constraints, we can have better investigative journalism that better informs our public so we can then make better decisions for a better tomorrow. And so this is where the marriage between critical pedagogy and critical media literacy really come into play is that uh, engagement or that uh, activism that I think, uh, I study teens in media, that's a big subject area for me. And I think that for young people today, not all by any means, uh, they are not a monolithic uh, population, but I do think that there, it's very easy to get lost in your phone, get lost in the scroll, that thinking that uh, reposting or retweeting or sharing or that hashtag activism is enough to make change. And what I think critical media literacy allows us to do is it provides pathways to think about an issue and then get engaged, boots on the ground in an issue to work and make change in communities. And that is what's really needed in an election year is to make sure that you are informed about the issues that you care about and then you are engaging in advocating for those issues through your vote. So beyond elections, which is obviously at the forefront of our minds, critical media literacy can help us engage in any sort of social issue that you care about. So if you care about the environment, there is a pathway through 
learning the, the tenets of critical media literacy, to engaging with those topics, and then going out and forming communities and coalitions to do that work to advocate for social change. And it might even be using the media in a savvy way. The media is not necessarily the enemy. It is a tool that can be used for good or for bad. And it's up to those of us who are engaging in critical media literacy to help facilitate a way for everyone to think critically about the media and then engage in the issues that they care about, not just during an election cycle, but there are those that are beyond, whether it's women's rights, racial injustice, uh, economic inequality and insecurity, LGBTQ rights, these are all climate change. There are a myriad of issues that we can start to make positive change if we are well versed in the issues, know how to use the media to our advantage and promote that message and do the hard work of activism through critical media literacy. So I am going to try to give you an optimistic answer. I'm gonna to try to, um, to focus on what we have seen in the last election cycle that was pivotal, that we saw women of color in particular really leading the charge and helping make positive change for our society. And while all that burden should not be on them, they are wonderful role models for the rest of us to think about what we need to do to make sure that everyone in our society has a voice to make sure that everyone in our society is treated like a human being. Uh, and I think that we can take those lessons from previous elections, not be complacent and work to be the change that we want to see in the world, not to speak in platitudes, but we do have that potential if we're willing to do the hard work. It's not easy. It's not guaranteed, but we do have examples of it working and it gives me hope for the future that we can try to repeat that again.